Right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to today's video on uh, the history of the United States. And because I'm designing this to be useful for people who are entering the <clears throat> historical field or are in school studying history at really any level, you know, I'm, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that are typically known about the Adams administration, or not necessarily typically known, but more well known about the Adams administration. Um, because it's kind of useful to know that. Um, the other thing is, truthfully, I also believe that it's important to properly understand what went on during Adams' uh, time in office as president. Uh, before we get into the comment, a like, a comment, and a subscription is greatly appreciated. Um, I'd love to hit 800 subscribers before my birthday, which is a, a little bit less than half a month away. We're not too far away from that. And 1,000 by the end of the year seems reasonable now, which is insane, but okay. <laughs> Thank you all for putting me at that level. Um, so... The reason why I'm not covering the election of 1796 is it was actually rather uncontroversial. Um, the two main candidates were John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Both Adams and Jefferson, at this point, were still very good friends. And Jefferson was, you know, okay with Adams becoming president. And, you know, Jefferson... Um, was vice president, of course, during this time. And Jefferson was a much different vice president than John Adams was. Adams was very involved in Senate proceedings, um, trying to steer debate, trying to push legislation through. Jefferson was perfectly content to just sit back and read the paper and take notes while the Senate debated and squabbled and passed legislation, and he would cast his vote only when necessary, or, you know, which, to be fair, so did Adams, but Adams basically tried to f get his viewpoint ac across and tried to influence a bill's passage. Whereas Jefferson said, if it passes, it passes, if it doesn't, it doesn't, if it needs my vote, well... I'm taking notes, I'll know what the debate is about, I'll know what my opinion on the bill is at that time. Um, two very different styles, as you can tell. Adams kept basically the current incumbent Washington cabinet when he took over an office, which was probably a very bad decision considering Hamilton had basically selected every single one of them. I don't remember if Hamilton was still Treasury Secretary, but it wouldn't surprise me. And that led to some issues. It was definitely much more pro-British than I think a lot of people would have appreciated or would have liked. And given that France was in the middle of its own revolution and American public support was actually in favor of the French Revolution even after it started turning violent. I'm not sure if it really supported the reign of terror. You know, Jefferson was probably the only person who could get away with not being completely against the reign of terror. Um, and even then, he was still of the type where he wanted to distance himself from it, basically saying, "In the violence should end soon, was his hope. Uh, yeah. But because the U.S. wanted to remain neutral and Jefferson agreed, Adams agreed, everyone agreed, you know, we kept trading with British, we kept trading with the French, we kept trading with everybody. And we'll talk about one area where American ships were going that, uh, well, had issues in a different era, in a different area. And that's the Mediterranean, but that's the Jefferson administration. So we're going to focus 
on Adams. Though Jefferson and Adams did work together on this issue on numerous occasions during the Washington administration prior to the ratification of the Constitution during the and even during the Adams administration to an extent, and that was the uh, Tripoli Pirates. Uh, so yeah, there's a little bit of overlap, but that's mostly a Jefferson story. Um, because that was Jefferson's pet issue uh, for, a, for a while. And he was deeply involved in that. But dealings with France really kind of just, they didn't go very well when Adams took office. Uh, the revolutionary government, I think it was at this point controlled by the Jacobins. Um, they were really harsh. Uh, they started attacking American merchant ships, uh, Cincinnati being one of them. So Adams wanted to send some diplomats. His first choice as a diplomat to send to France was Jefferson, both because Jefferson was a very close personal friend of Adams and because Jefferson, being the chief diplomat to France, would show just how serious Adams was in making sure that a peaceable agreement was made. Because Jefferson was extremely well known to the French, both royalist, Jacobin, revolutionary, didn't matter who, Jefferson was respected all around. However, Jefferson refused. Now, you could argue it was because Jefferson was deeply partisan. Uh, yeah, that's kind of going to affect his choice. You could argue, well, he'd have to resign as vice president in order to take that position. Unfortunately, that would leave the vice presidency open for basically the entire Adams administration. And that means no tie-breaking vote in the Senate. And, yeah, I, mm, I don't think Jefferson would ever accept, even though... Adams and him were very, very close friends. And this isn't the point where their friendship broke down. No, the, that was the election of 1800. Anyway. Adams wound up sending three diplomats to France. Or he wound up sending a team of diplomats to France. Sorry. Anyway. And the French Im ambassador, the French officials who met with the, these diplomats, well, they wanted bribe money and hush and all sorts of other stuff and gifts before they would get on to the business of negotiating an end to the seizing and attacks on American ships. Well, if this got out, this would be a major, major, major scandal. And this is kind of where there's a lot of overlap, because a lot of the problems of the Adams administration comes from France and the quasi-war, which very, very, got very close to becoming a real war. But... Adams basically played the card that we don't negotiate with terrorists. We're, we're not giving you money just because you think you can bully us because we're a new nation and we're vulnerable. No. We are playing our own game. Be reasonable, then we'll be reasonable. If you don't want to be reasonable, well, that's your problem, not ours. Now, 
I think a while back I did a video on the Barbary Wars where I said that Jefferson was the one who really invented the we don't negotiate with terrorists line. But based off of his actions. But you can make an argument for Adams here. I think Jefferson, I, I'm still going to give it to Jefferson, but Adams kind of set got that ball rolling that we don't negotiate with people who want bribe money. We're not giving bribes out as a nation. So, yeah, credit where it's due. The problem is this got out and this became known as the XYZ affair. And, yeah, that was a major scandal. Um, another major scandal of the Adams administration was, of course, the issues where, yeah, we were appearing to go against France, who was our ally at the time, or it seemed like it, especially now that they didn't have a, ro a monarch in power and they had a Republican government, or at least, in theory, a Republican government. But calling the Jacobins um, democratic in any sort of the word is a really bad idea. I mean, the Committee of Public Safety was probably the biggest threat to public safety, for example. The other major problem with the Adams administration is were the Alien and Sedition Acts, which I'm really much against, but I'm going to actually read them out specifically, or read out what exactly they did. Because I want to make sure you understand just how bad they were. Right, so the Alien and Sedition Acts were four laws that Adam signed into law in 1798. So this is right before the midterms. Uh, they made it harder for an immigrant to become a citizen, which was a nationalization, uh, naturalization act. Allowed the president to imprison and deport non-citizens who were deemed dangerous. An act concerning aliens, also known as the Alien Friends Act. A really hilarious title. Um, um, also the same, or were from a hostile nation... A.K. if we went to France, all of a sudden, Adams could deport immigrants from France. Yeah, which was the Alien Enemy Act. And also, the Sedition Act of 1798, which uh, made criminal the making of false statements critical of the federal government. By the way, I think that one's actually still in effect. Still on the books, yeah. Um, well, there's this thing called free speech, and also, just because something's false doesn't mean they knew it was false. They could have had bad information coming to them. Uh, the Alien Friends Act expired two years after its passage. The Sedition Act, uh, sorry, I was wrong. The Sedition Act expired, um, in 1801. And the Naturalization and Alien Enemies Act uh, has no expiration. But these, these acts were extremely influential on the election of 1800. And also one of the, the many, many reasons uh, Jefferson lost. So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a very bad look. And, and in truth, the laws kind of, you would think, would make sense in a lot of ways. I still disagree with the Sedition Act, um, which, by the way, a different version of that would be passed later in, I want to say, 1917. Um, under Woodrow Wilson, and for those of you fans, those of you who are fans of the cynical historian Wilson, um, in all seriousness, yeah, Woodrow Wilson was a terrible, terrible, terrible president, and yeah, I don't like Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> anyway. 
yeah, these, these acts were generally regarded poorly in the nation. E even by, um, well, Jefferson obviously hated them. But there were some reasons in a lot of ways um, to pass legislation just in case we went to war with France. But the thing is, Adams worked so hard to avoid war with France that when it didn't happen, these acts reflected very poorly on his presidency. So his his presidency would have actually probably been bolstered if we had gone to war. That's not even, not even joking there. Um, because these acts would be seen less poorly. Um, the only other thought I could give on the Adams administration is, of course, the midnight appointments to various federal positions, uh, judgeships, courtships, um, and we'll talk about that more when we decide to actually talk about Marbury v. Madison, because that is actually kind of a Jefferson administration thing, and we may talk about the Marshall Court at various points, or even do a video on the Marshall Court, um, because this is a time when the Supreme Court is actually getting powerful. And we'll talk about uh, the Marshall Court when we talk about Jefferson. Because that was an interesting time. Because John Marshall wanted to expand the power of the Supreme Court in a lot of ways. Jefferson wasn't going to fight that too much because he wanted to weaken his own branch. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be an interesting video. Um, anyway, this that's a, that about wraps it up for the Adams administration. Next time uh, we cover the history of the United States, we're going to talk about the election of 1800, which is probably to this day one of, if not the most vitriolic, hateful, angry, and downright mud-slinging, dirty elections in American history. Very few come close to rivaling that level of nastiness. 2016 ain't got nothing on that election. Doesn't even have anything on 1828, or really 1824, but both of those elections were pretty bad, honestly. But that's what happens when you've got Andrew Jackson. Anyway, going to end it right here. I hope you all have a very lovely evening. I'll see you all next time. Take it easy. Have a very nice uh, night.